right now. Washington Mornings on the Mall. At AM 630. 737 on WMAL. Brian Neiman, Brian Wilson continuing to follow the story of the chaos out of the Middle East with now protest outside the U.S. Embassy in Yemen. It seems to be under control now, but... They, they did unclear. get over the wall, um, and they did set fire to a building, and they tried to plunder the embassy, but they were pushed back. So uh, more of that uh, coming out throughout the morning. We also have Byron York and Bill, Bill Crystal coming up in the 8 o'clock hour. We are pleased to be joined now by Stuart Varney, host of Varney & Company, Fox Business Network. You can check him out every weekday at 920. Let me start off, Stuart, with Libya, because now when the whole thing with Libya happened, uh, you know, the you know, fly zone, there were a lot of people saying, well, it's being pushed by the French and by the British because they have such high stakes in that country because of the oil there. Has that been fixed? I mean, is the flow of oil coming out of Libya again? Does that have any effect on what is still a pretty high price for a crude these days? Uh, Yes. uh, The uh, output of oil from Libya has gone back almost to levels that it was at before Gaddafi was toppled. So you're back almost to whatever passes for normal oil production there. But the news this morning is that this developing Mideast situation, the anti-American demonstrations breaking out in Yemen this morning, Mm -hmm. that is putting upward pressure on the price of oil. We're at $97 a barrel, and that in turn is dragging our gas prices up again. We've reached a national average of almost 387 as of this morning, up about five cents in a week. And most of the country, if you look at the big population states, most of them are now paying $4 a gallon. So the headline is $4 a gallon, it's arrived, and the Mideast is part of the reason. And it, and, and we are seeing protests all over the place in the Mideast, uh, even protests in Iran where they're shouting death to America again. We've had it in Libya, have it in Yemen, we had it in Egypt. Serious situation. But, but what you point out is interesting is that not only is this an affront to American sovereignty when you attack one of our embassies, it impacts our pocketbook. It does. It does. Um, are we going to pay the Egyptians a uh, billion dollars? The president is getting ready a billion dollar aid package, which he's got to push through Congress, which is designed to shrink Egypt's very troubling level of debt. Are we going to give them that billion dollars, given what's going on there? Are we going to do that? I mean, that's our national pocketbook. You refer to our own personal pocketbook, which is the price of gasoline. I think, that to take the big picture here, we may be seeing the collapse of President Obama's three-and-a-half-year-old Mideast policy. That brings instability. It's a lack of American leadership, and that pressures hard assets like oil. And that's what's happening right now. Very serious situation, Brian. This really is. All right. Uh, just to, to divert, we've been on this all morning long, but just to divert briefly, the iPhone 5. We announced yesterday <laughs> we're going to get the iPhone 5. How, is that going to be a big deal? And is that going to, you know, as some people have suggested, even stimulate the GDP? Uh, yes. I read that report, too. A big bank put out a report saying the iPhone 5 because it will sell so many units, maybe three, four billion dollars worth of units, that it could actually boost the entire economy. I don't know about that. That seems to be going a little far. But there's no doubt that Apple products, new Apple products, really do stimulate significant demand, high interest in the world of technology. And they cement Apple as the world's leading technology company. I'm not an Apple iPhone user. I don't have one. What's wrong with you, Stuart Varney? I got my BlackBerry because I like to, t- you know, text with my little thumbs oh. here. That's what I do. Welcome to the 21st century. Come on. Oh, all right, well, okay. but, but, you know, on that point, though, I was surprised to hear that Apple does not control the market share of smartphones, that uh, still the Droid does much better than Apple does on yep, that front. Yep, I believe so. That's uh, the, the Droid version from Google, Google Software, mm-hmm. Uh, that runs the, the majority stake of the, uh, of the smartphone universe. And get this, uh, the Amazon Kindle Fire in one year has taken 20%, actually 22%, right. of America's tablet market. Mm-hmm. So there's a direct competitor to the iPad. Here comes Amazon. Watch out, boys. Mm-hmm. And yet but the, the, the stakes 
in, in the cool states, put it like that. Yeah. Leadership in cool, that's still very much with Apple. Well, but Apple makes it up because the Kindle is, what, a sixth of the price of, of an iPad, and the Droid is much cheaper than the iPhone as well. Well, that's the incredible thing yeah. about Apple. Their profit margins mm-hmm. remain just as solid as they were before the iPhone came out, right. and they're sitting on a cash pile of well <laughs> over $100 uh, billion. $100 billion that's in amazing. the bank. That's amazing. All right, before we let you go, one last question. The, the jobs report that came out last week, um, was it as dismal as it has been reported, in your opinion? In my opinion, worse. <laughs> it, it was the worst picture of America's employment situation that I can remember, specifically because millions of people are dropping out of the workforce. One in five American men will not get out of bed this morning and go to work. Yeah, One amazing. in five. We've never seen that before. That's mm-hmm. terrible. All right, Stuart, it's a pleasure to have you on, as always. Thanks very much. Thank you, gentlemen. Stuart Varney from the Fox Business Channel. with.